Welcome to What a Creep, the show with Margot Donahue and Sonia Mansfield talking about creeps from the past to the present. This is your quick guide to the biggest creeps, jerks, assholes, and losers, the best of the worst. From two nice ladies who want the world to be a little less creepy. Welcome back to What a Creep. This is Margot Donahue, and my cohort in creepitude, as always, is the amazing Sonia Mansfield. Hey, Sonia. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. And we have a riot of an episode today. No. Oh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> we are the podcast that talks about creeps from the past to the present. Today, we're talking about an event in history that you may not have heard about before. I'm excited to present this to you. What we do is that we challenge the other person who's giving the story. I give the story. Sonia this week is going to give you the non-creep, and I'm really excited about what she's going to be presenting today. If you follow us on social media, that would be our Facebook group. The Facebook page is like a basic Facebook page. We rarely check in, and it's a place where people go to complain about us either being racist or having bad, salty <laughs> language. <laughs> Racism. Yeah, we're, we're, so, we're so racist against white people. <laughs> Yes, that's we, a thing. That's a thing. Sure. <laughs> we have sure. a private Facebook group you can join. You do have to answer a few questions and just not be a dick and you'll have a yeah. good time there. We're very proud of that. We are on Twitter at CreepPod because somebody had what a creep for 10 years and never used it. Creep. <laughs> We're on Instagram at what a creep podcast. We have a basic old timey email. You can send us suggestions there. It's what a creep podcast at gmail.com. We will also send you stickers if you would like some. We'll drop that in the mail for you. And Sonia, do you want to talk about the website? Yes, you can go to what a creep podcast.com and it's everything you ever wanted to know about our show, but we're afraid to ask. It's got links to almost all of our episodes, except for seasons one through four, which are on the Patreon page. More on that in a minute. And there's a link to our merch shop where you can get t-shirts and journals and tote bags. And we have our logo and we have damn it, Max. And, uh, Maybe next year. And uh, what's the other one? Masked and Vaxxed. Yep. I think was the other design on there. So do it. Buy some stuff. The mugs are great. The t-shirts are soft. The tote bags, they tote stuff. They do tote it. very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're toterific. <laughs> so you mentioned we have a Patreon page. If you want to support the show that way, the first four seasons of our show are now up there. They're just for Patreon members. We put out two bonus episodes a month. The next one is going to be hilarious because we're going to read our one-star reviews on there <laughs> from iTunes. Now, please, this is not to encourage you to leave one-star no. reviews. You can leave a five-star and then write something shitty as a joke in there. That's totally fine. But yeah. we're, but I do want to thank a few people who left us five-star reviews, Sonia. They are yes. Dog Lover Tara, oh, oh. My Green Left Eye, <laughs> and whatever and kelbell 255 thank you all so much for leaving us five star I need, reviews i need more cowbell <laughs> i need more cowbell look i've got a fever and the only cure is more cowbell <laughs> is there anything else we're just babbling along here is there anything else we need to present or are we ready to jump into the show no i think <gasps> we're ready okay Sonia. Yes. Let me pull this up. Sorry. That's what she said. He said? That's what he said. <laughs> yes. We're silly. It's the end of the day. We it is. It's the end of it's the end of a short week. But yes. For some reason it still felt long. It, it certainly <laughs> did. I hope y'all had a good week. And we're gonna be talking about today. The Sleepy Lagoon murder, which led to the Zoot Suit riots. This happened in L.A. between 1942 and 44. On August 2nd, 1942, Jose Gerardo Diaz, he was 22 years old. He was found unconscious, unconscious, excuse me, in an area known as the Sleepy Lagoon. And that was sort of this watering place where it was used for irrigation, Mexican Americans would use it as a swimming area because of the racism in LA. They couldn't sleep in the public pools, even though they paid taxes for the public pools. And mm -hmm. then at night, the Sleepy Lagoon was kind of like a lover's lane type of place. Okay. 
When they found him, he had multiple head injuries, was stabbed at least twice, and had a broken finger and a very high alcohol level. He was at a party. Okay. He died at the Los Angeles hospital on that Sunday. His brother managed to arrive just in time to identify him. And the police responded by doing a complete sweep of Mexican-American neighborhoods in L.A. And this kind of caught the imagination of the police and the media. Mostly from future creep William Randolph Hearst. We will talk about him mm-hmm. one day. He's definitely yes, on the list. On, he is on the list. Yikes. He's he really terrible. Anyway. These kids were called zoot suitors, and we'll talk about that. They were seen as a dangerous element and that they were causing a crime wave. The phrase de zoot, the suit, was often used in media. Yikes. His murder, by the way, to this day remains unsolved. Mm. Uh, Shocking. But it was the catalyst for the zoot suit riots that happened the following summer. If you've heard the Cherry Poppin' Daddies, that was the name of the band. And I didn't even realize how horrible it was until. I didn't even think, honestly, I, I knew the song. So at some point, we all went through like a swing phase, right? And it was all like squirrel nut zippers and. Um, Brian and Setzer, Pop- orgas- orgas- yeah, orchestra. Yeah, all of that. And then, and then we had Cherry Poppin' Daddies, which. And the song Zoot Suit Riot, and I've never heard of the Zoot Suit Riots, by the way, and I did not do any research on them because Marco told me not to. <laughs> but that name is so fucking creepy fucking gross. Yeah, it's so gross. It's like and I, I think I wrote it on our Facebook page. I'm like cherry popping dead's like virgin virgin taken fathers yeah (laughs) like it's so gross like could you imagine like someone having that band name now it's when somebody thinks they're being naughty and i think that was the idea but now it's just really fucking gross i mean yeah 1997 y'all yeah, this is 25 years ago. I don't want to brag, but I'm a cherry popping daddy. Yeah, I put it as a tagline on my MySpace page. Woo! Like, so gross. You have no idea how popular swing was for a little while there in the late 90s. So weird. It was very weird. If you he- do hear that song and it's called Zoot Suit Riot, you will get absolutely no idea about the horrible <laughs> event no. that happened. No. What this did to the Chicano and African American community in Los Angeles. This episode, we will talk about the Sleepy Lagoon murders, the sham of a trial that happened afterwards, these zoot suit riots, the real ones, of L.A. in 1943, trigger warnings, racism, and my terrible attempts at Spanish. <laughs> you have been warned. Oh, but I should say, my good friend Margot Poraz, Margot P. from Book vs. Movie, was somebody that I reached out to because she is Mexican-American and she writes about Mexican-American issues, especially on the West Coast in California. So don't blame her for anything, by the way. But I'm just saying that I did consult people, so I, hopefully I'm not going to be an idiot. Uh, yeah. Sleepy Lagoon Murders, the wiki page, the PBS American Experience video, the Sleepy Lagoon Defendants. There's also an old timey website, the Sleepy Sleepy Lagoon website. Sorry, the L.A. Law Library. No, Corbin Bernson isn't there. What? <laughs> Disappointing. A few. Forget it. A few things that I read: Sleepy Lagoon Mystery by Guy and Dore, the Zoot Suit Riots by Maurizio Maison, the Zoot Suit Riots by Charles Rivers Editors. There's a movie called Zoot Suit 1981 that stars Edward James Almost, which is based on the play. I'd never heard of this. None of these I'm things. Fa- I'm fascinated. And I put the clip to the link for the Zoot Suit Riot by the Cherry Poppin' Daddies, just for all of y'all. Because God forbid. <laughs> zoot Suit Riot. Riot. Grab another bottle of beer. Yeah. So the Cherry Poppin' Daddies, Steve Perry. <laughs> was asked about the Zoot Suit Riots. And they said to him, what's that all about? And he's like, I didn't really do a lot of, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, I didn't really do a lot of research on it, but I heard what it was. And I imagined that there were a bunch of kids that loved swing dancing. And some of these sailors came along and gave them a hard time because they were nerds. So that's what I think happened. And I'm like, LOL Mm. to the research. He was, you did. He was too busy popping cherries (laughs) to do research. (laughs) Yeah, boy. Uh, uh, yeah. Pop and cherry. Yeah. You can't see me, but I'm acting a fool right yeah, now. Yeah, you are. You are. I had to put my, my script back up. 
We'll start with Jose Diaz. He was 22 on the day that he died and was exactly two days away from joining the Navy. He was originally born in Mexico, and then his family came up the coast. What's interesting about America and about California and about our Mexican culture is that Mexico was a part of California for a long time, and then it wasn't. And that's just what happens. Borders are created and made, and things are moved around but if you think Mexican racism against Mexicans is sort of a new thing, oh, no, no, no. It's been going on for over 100 years. This is a country mm-hmm. that we are proud of our immigrant culture until it, until it interferes with our white European perspective. And then <laughs> until we're mildly inconvenienced. Exactly. I was mentioning it was the Sleepy Lagoon. It was a reservoir. It's the way where the the Mexican-American kids would hang out because it was segregated in L.A. where mm-hmm. Mexicans could have go to church, where they could eat, where they could swim, what libraries they could use. It was really that bad. In 1942, this is where we're going to the summer of 1942. So the December 7th, previously it was Pearl Harbor, and all these American men start joining the war effort L.A. and San Diego are big ports on the West Coast for this. I should also say in 1942, if you've never heard of this, we had things called Japanese internment camps. <sighs> Boy. Where yeah. Japanese Americans were put in camps. Yes. Their entire families, they were made to sell their businesses. They were and they were forced out. And it's it, awful. It's, it's awful. It is a horrible it, stain on our country. American citizens. Yeah. That they did this to. It's beyond fucked up. Yeah. So that was the thinking at the time. If we have a problem with somebody, you know, if, if Japan bombed Hawaii, so we therefore have to blame every Japanese person that's in America, even mm-hmm. though they have nothing to do with what anyway. Yes. It's wrong. Now, because these men were preparing for war, the need for workers became so crucial, this is true, that Mexicans and Mexican-Americans, who were at one point forced back to Mexico during the Depression, because we needed jobs for the white men, yes, there were thousands that were sent back to America to take over for jobs for, once again, men and women that are going to be serving overseas. It was called the Brocaro Program. There's also at this time an influx of African-Americans from the South coming to L.A. to look for opportunities. This is all kind of bubbling over. And if you're not familiar Mm -hmm. with the geography, geography of L.A., I don't know why I said it that way, geography. Um, (laughs) L.A. to me is like the suburbs. It's just very Mm -hmm. spread out. Like yes. San Francisco is pretty small. New York City, Manhattan, it kind of is compact. Like it's a city that's. Yes. L.A. is I think it's like a bunch of suburbs and there's a little bit of a city here and there. The Mexican-Americans that worked in the farm and a lot of them worked on farms at the time tended to live what was called the barrio. But there's these places outside of Los Angeles proper. But then there was also a section of Watts, which is there's 38th Street, which was mainly Mexican-American and African-American at the time. Okay. Now I want to talk to you about Zoot Suits and jazz music. Do you know what a Zoot Suit is, even? Uh, it's a suit uh-huh. that you Zoot in. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it's um, is, is high-waisted pants, right? Like really yep. high and like kind of a long jacket. Yep. Okay. And the pants are baggy they're very baggy but they cuff the ankle yes so it's slender on the way down it started with african-american communities in new york and chicago jazz music is a uniquely american type of music it was created here pretty much decided it's one of the american art forms with baseball you know you Mm -hmm. have hot dogs baseball jazz music Jazz music is known for there's a pattern of a music that's set up and then you use those notes and then people can go around them. Improv. It's improvisation. Yeah, you can like riff. Riffing. Improvisation is sort yeah. of this form. Of, so it was like Dixieland music, 
And then it was a little more straight laced jazz music, like band music. And then big band music became popular. And then swing music is a part of the big band music. It's all a part of that. Like you have a basic song and then you have like a trumpet section and the drum Mm -hmm. section and whatever. Kids fucking lost their minds for swing music. (laughs) Cause it was so fun. It's, it's, danceable and you yes, don't even have to music be, is it is it's fun, fun. It, it's super fun you don't have to be that elegant to do it it was it's very sporty thing mm-hmm. you know kids do flips you could just clap and kind of move your feet around I mean it's just it's yeah. fun and the zoot suit was an extension of what started in African-American culture on the east and it moves west and then especially Mexican youths super love the zoot suit And part of it was, it's just the culture of going out. It's this generation that not many were able to go to college, but they could make some money and help take care of their families. And they had some pocket money. And Mm -hmm. you got some pocket money and you got a weekend coming up and you've been working in the, you know, the farm all day or working at a factory. What do you want to do on Saturday night? You want to dance. You want to look cute. You want to meet somebody cute and make out with them. You want to (laughs) drink whatever booze is around like that's yeah normal the kids that started getting into it well okay so it's called pachuca pachuco and basically it's like a dance move turned into a fashion statement so it's a wide it's a hat a wide brim okay hat yeah, yeah yeah and color 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 mm-hmm. and the girls and the guy would wear the, this long coat with the pants and he could really dance that much with it because the suit would get wrinkled so the big move was like you extend your arm out and the girl kind of swung around you and there's Mm. a lot of leaning back you see with zoot suit dancing Uh, malcolm x was into zoot suits i mean it's just it's that's yeah if you for people who want maybe don't know what we're talking about there was a janet jackson video she did um what was for all right Mm-hmm. And she did the whole like zoot, like her and all of her dancers are wearing zoot suits and they are, it's like a musical number and they're all dancing. And I think Cab Calloway's in it and all this stuff. And so if you're She's looking, Rivera, if you're like, think... yeah, I'm trying to give you all a little cultural reference yes, there. Please, thank you. Now, the word pachuco and pachuca and then girls, it was short skirts, like way above the knee and then hair as big and mighty as anything the B-52s ever attempted <laughs> when they started. Look up early B-52s. Okay. It's just beehives upon the beehives. And you put flowers it. in it. And you use crepe paper in there to create. It was a whole. These kids looked beautiful. And it was a performance. And it's just yes. all a part of going out. Like you, they're, the, most of them are Catholic. They work really hard. They're living with their parents. They're being good. You know, America's at war. They want to fit in. And then you on Saturday nights, like Saturday Night Fever, you just want to kind of yeah. lose your shit a little bit. You're like a peacock. You want to go out and yes. strut your stuff. Yes. The words then became used as a pejorative against people. Yeah. And so the cops would say, we're going to go in and get pachucos and pachucas. And it was used in a way like when I was younger, if you say, oh, this person is a rapper, I would say, oh, well, what kind? Are you in a group? Are you solo? Do you do jazz or do you, is it more like hip hop or like, what is that? Whereas my Mm -hmm. grandmother would be like, oh my God, the rappers. And to her, that's anybody of color. Yes. She was very racist being my point. So yes. it's a case where a word was taken from people to decide who they were. And part of the problem was, I mean, basic racism. And there's this idea of that. In one of the books I read, there was a person who talked about, who wrote for Hearst and said, well, these people are, you know, from the Aztecs and the, the Aztec Mayan culture. So they, they have bloodthirstiness in them. You know, it's just, oh, it's so right. Also... It's rationing that happens at the time. People ration things like rubber, like uh, uh, eggs, milk, butter, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like there's certain things you ration. Uh, Can they, you imagine? What? We wouldn't even do this now. Like we can't even be minorly inconvenienced oh, no. to, wear a, to wear a fucking mask to keep people from being sick. And now like back in the day, you would actually have to give things up for your fellow Americans. And now we're like, wear a mask oh fuck you i'm going into this starbucks and i'm gonna cough all over everybody because it's my freedom <laughs> it, 
was a way of contributing because most people knew somebody who who was volunteering or right. was being sent away. So that was something like we all did. And yes. part of the shortages was wool shortages because that needed to be made for uniforms for the soldiers. Uniforms because it's not like they're being pressed and cleaned every single day. Like you go through some kind of a war effort and you're out in the snow and mud and you get shot at and there's blood. They throw that suit away and they need to get you another one. And so there was this wool shortage. And so mm-hmm. another reason to bag on the zoot suitors these kids was because well look at that waste that they're doing all that right. fabric when it could be so much smaller if you look at Got it on i remember 2001 nine eleven happened i worked in at uh, condy nast i was in the pr department and i was tasked to look up what were the editor letters like the first issue after pearl harbor happened which would be mm. like february or march of 42 and what was the fashion at, like like what are they stories did they do things became very simple silhouettes it was not a lot of fabrics it was very muted colors collars it was very muted it was much less fabulous in vogue yeah. before versus this time right it's like everybody was Bland. Be, trying to be respectful or be whatever. respectful. Like, it's, yeah, you think or the, their version of respectful. Yeah. Here are these kids going out on Saturday night and like, mm-hmm. oh, they don't even speak English and they're wearing these colors and they're going to that jazz music and they're wasting all this fabric. It was considered un-American to the point right. that at some point, zoot suits were banned in L.A. And you could go to jail for a month if you were caught in a zoot <laughs> suit. <laughs> so ridiculous it's really stupid hearst papers were writing all these kinds of stories and it's been going on for a few years but especially like a year up to the jose diaz's murder that mexican americans they were in gangs they are a problem they cause all this violence and it's in their culture it's just in their dna what are we going to do about it which causes Such a bullshit. lot of hostility towards Mexican Americans who are just like, I just want to live my fucking life. I just want to work and do what everybody else does. Okay. So the police reaction to Jose Diaz's murder was to go through all of the Mexican American neighborhoods and gathered up 600 people. Jesus Christ. And that's a lot. From 12 to 25, that was the age range. I said 12. There yes. were little kids there. That's messed up they were charged with assault robbery armed robbery all kinds of things 100 175 were then held for various crimes so of the 600 175 they kept 22 of those were tried for the killing of diaz jose diaz and they're saying 22 people killed this man they were thought 22 people were in on it okay the judge and they were tried together and they weren't all given their own lawyers. The judge, who's a real prick, Charles W. Frick, was a huge racist asshole, and he had no intention of giving a fair trial. No, he of had course a not. Prosecutor's background. I just wrote my notes. Here's the trial and the bullshit involved. <laughs> Frick. Frick. He's a dick. Yes. Frick had, it was about 17 of them had wound up going to trial. And they had, a couple of them had lawyers, but mostly they didn't. And the room was so small that the jury box and the defendants were basically staring at each other really close. And so he had them change the seating around so they were facing one another. In the three months it took to put them to trial, he wouldn't let any of them get haircuts, get clothes, nothing. So they walk into this courtroom three months later. And these are kids that are really careful about their appearance. Mm -hmm. Everything. They have raggedy clothes with holes in them. They're they're stinky. And they have this long hair that's super long now. And crazy because they haven't been able to comb it. They haven't been able to style it. And the judge says, well, you have to look like you looked on the night that it happened. That's that's. Exactly. It's it's such <sighs> such bullshit. He, By the way, not not that much has changed. This kind of shit still happens. It still happens. So, 
Yeah. They go, uh. they're on, so the, the trial is going on. The judge would take the uh, prosecutor out to lunch sometimes and give him tips on like what to ask on the stand. <laughs> The defendant lawyers were not allowed to sit with their clients. They had to sit away from them. So the only time they could confer with them was during breaks and lunch breaks. That was it. Some bullshit. It's huge bullshit. And they were try. People would go in and and say like, "Oh, I saw that kid rob a store. I know he's. I know he's guilty. That one over there. There's a kid named Hank Lavis, Henry Lavis, who was rounded up 20 years old and had a couple of skirmishes." But they just railroaded. it. He was the one that was really tough because he thought it was all bullshit and just let them know, like, I know what you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. This is fucked up. But he wouldn't let them see him cry. They wouldn't let him see him get weak. As this trial is happening, there is the Sleepy Lagoon Defense League. And it's filled with a bunch of commies and actors. (laughs) Maybe they're all the same. But it's filled with socially (laughs) conscious people. Yes. (laughs) commies and actors commies and actors anthony quinn rita hayworth director orson welles orson welles yes he was always accused of being part of communist activity it's like anybody who yeah and people at the time by the way before this happened people did explore the communist party it's not like it's that crazy i mean yeah anyway yeah well and like you you got in trouble just for like going to meetings and like learning about shit and people are like you're a communist bah! Right. like people freak out yes this is what so this is this is 10 years before that the mccarthy hearings mm-hmm. start but they're collecting their evidence now yes the fbi is more powerful than it's ever been and so these actors get together and they're like this is some bullshit and we got to look out for these kids cuz they're not getting any kind of representation. Rita Hayworth by the way is Hispanic. She has a Hispanic background. One of the women there Henry's sister the man, man I just mentioned, she was speaking at an event at Beverly Hills Hotel. And she showed up like she would as a zoot suit girl. She had short black skirt, she had the big hair. And Rita's like you probably need to wear something a little more demure. And so she gave her one of her dresses that she wore to the Oscar. So this girl, the first time she wore a formal gown, wow. it was Rita Hayworth's. By the way, if you haven't seen Rita Hayworth, y'all Google her. She's one of the most gorgeous creatures you've ever seen. And, and a great dancer. And a great dancer and just lit up the screen whenever she was gorgeous. Gilda. Yeah. Yeah, she's love, she's love her. And she was socially very conscious. Yes. Anthony Quinn, he thought he was going to be blackballed by the industry. But his parents said when he was a kid, those were the people that gave their family eggs when they had no money for food, when they had nothing. So they're mm-hmm. like, no, you got to you got to go out there. They're, they're being tried. The judge also decides at one point, you know what? Whenever you hear your name being said, you need to stand up in the defendant's booth. And so it sounds like they're being accused of things that are kind of like affirming it by standing up. Yeah. And a lot of them don't speak English or their English isn't that strong. And they certainly right. don't speak on the level of a lawyer that's like railroading them. And, <laughs> and, so fucked up. And the jury's looking at these and it's all over the papers that like these kids are stinky and they got this crazy hair. And it's like all of this was put against them. OK, you're going to be shocked to hear. That most of them were convicted. What? Spoiler. No. So the Defense League pretty much puts in, you know, right away, we're going to appeal this. This is total horseshit. You know, just stay with us. So while it's on appeal, a bunch of them were sent, you know, different prisons. Hank L- Lavis, um, he's the one that went up to Fulton because he was a little bit saltier than the others. Mm. But the others actually had a decent time in the prison because the Hollywood people made sure that they were treated better than the other prisoners. So they had like steaks and milk and, but they're still in prison. I mean, let's, yeah, be, let's be clear. Exactly. The girlfriends, three girlfriends of the guys that were convicted, there were three women, never got a trial, had no representation, and they were sent to the Ventura School for Girls. Uh, a place known to be so hideous that women were known to try to swallow safety pins the night before they had to go in there because it was so fucking terrible. That is awful. They served awful. for years. They got no special treatment. They didn't have anybody that is, looking out for them. It's such bullshit. It fucking sucks. It sucks. They were called zoot suit slick chicks and just sort of like... 
same thing. We weren't allowed to cut their hair. We weren't allowed to, you know, yeah. just no representation. Okay. So then let's go back. So there, there, there's a, this appeal happening. It's going on and it's going on. And here we are. It's the following summer, June of 1943. And there's some sailors and, you know, sailors, when they come to town, they put on their outfits and they walk around. You, know, you live in San Francisco. I live in New York. We yeah. see them. It's cute. Yeah, it's just like anchors away. Yes, it's just like that. They go across the, the Brooklyn or, Bridge singing, yeah, or or out on the town or whatever it's called. Or yeah, it's a very just, special. They, they link arms and they and they <laughs> dance and they sing. Or it's yeah. an episode of um, Sex in the City. They remember that when they had like the Fleet oh, yes. Week episode. <laughs> yes, we get Fleet Week here in San Francisco. Yes. Yeah, we get it in New York too, and it's, mm-hmm. it's just a thing. My brother was in. By the way, my brother was in the Navy for like fifteen years. I kind of know the culture. I know. I mean, he would mm-hmm. never wear his suit when he was walking around. That was like a thing for him because he wanted to blend in. Mm. He just yeah. Went, no, I I see people all the time yeah. in their uniforms during Fleet Week here. I always yeah. got a smile. It's at a them. thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm always like, you know, hey, howdy, howdy. you know. Well, howdy, howdy. Well, think about Hi, it. Hi, sailor. <laughs> Hi. Mm. You're single now, you know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, where was I? Let me think for a second. Sailors. Uh, sailors. <laughs> See? <laughs> Man. <laughs> Margo's got semen on the brain. <laughs> The sailors show up. They show up in L.A. They're going to be shipped out. They're going to, you know, they're, they're putting their lives on the line. And everywhere they go, they're treated like a hero. Mm-hmm. And a couple of them decided it's late in Los Angeles. Let me just go to a neighborhood I don't know and just walk around and see what happens. And there were some toughs, Mexican-American toughs, that gave them a hard time. I think it was around the 38th Street area. The, one of them got kind of roughed up. Goes back to the base and says, I just got jumped by a bunch of Mexicans and mm. I'm really mad. Will you come with me and we'll get some justice going? What were they looking like? Oh, they're Mexican and they're wearing zoot suits. Zoot suits? What? Uh. We need to de zoot them, don't we? Yes, that'll fix it. That'll fix it. So these sailors are coming up by the dozen. And they're just walking around these neighborhoods and they're getting more and more pissed off. They're carrying chains. They're carrying baseball bats, shivs, their tire irons. They're just carrying whatever they've got on them. Uh, And they start beating people and they're getting away with it. Of course. It goes on for almost a week. Holy shit. All week. It's hundreds of these sailors. And there were people who drove them around, who Jesus said it was their Christ. duty to help American soldiers. And Sorry. I have to say, I it's forgot. Duty. To, this is what I need to say also. Some of them, a lot of them, grew up all over the country, probably never even met a Mexican person before, mm-hmm. never seen the ocean. Like they're from some place where they've, this is all right. exotic and therefore strange to them. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons they're just walking around and looking like, well, what's over here? Whereas yeah. I grew up in the city. Like, you don't do that. <laughs> it's like just, yeah. So that's also a part of it. But people were driving them. If they didn't see a Mexican American, if they saw an African American, that's close enough. If they're just looking to beat up people, they're looking to beat up people. And they've got their eyes mainly on men, men meaning 12 to 25 year olds once again. So <sighs> 12. Yeah. It started to escalate when one guy got ballsy enough that he went into a movie theater and he told the manager, turn on the lights. I want to see who's in your audience. So they turn on the lights. They stop the movie. These guys patrol this movie theater and they start dragging people out that they see in zoot suits. Fucked up. Then they're that's ratcheting up again then it becomes you can't just find them you can't just beat them up you need to take their suits off of them so they're stripping them they're beating them up and taking all their clothes off of them and what the fuck peeing on their zoot suits lighting them on fire oh my god so the cops get called and what do the cops do when you see beat a shivering take- <laughs> yes when you see a naked shivering man you know, hiding in an alleyway, desperate to just get home because they're just freaked out. You arrest him and you let the sailors go. Or you give the sailors a, a ride back to the ship. Such bullshit. Such bullshit. 
this just goes on for days and days and days. It finally stops, but the tension never really kind of goes away. But at that, though, when they talk about the Zoot Suit Riot from that nifty little song, that's yes. what they're talking about. Oh, see, I thought it was just some kids that wanted to swing dance and no. they're nerds. <laughs> Man, what? Totally different. Yeah. It's so fucked up. So the, what happens with the trial, so eventually the verdict is overturned. Most of these guys, they're let go. And one of the jailhouse dudes, you know, guard says, well, they'll be back. You know, there's always somebody. Yeah. And a couple of them did have issues after yeah. that. You know, it just, it's it wasn't great. Hank eventually had his own restaurant and he was able to hire his family. Oh, that's cool. Which was cool. He was sort of looked up to in the neighborhood. He was a little, you know, older and smarter. He died of a heart attack at 48. Oh, man, that's yeah. super young. Years later, one of the men that was on trial, no, one of the women, excuse me, one of the women that was sent to the reform school. Jesus. When she was on her deathbed, she said she put up with it and she did it because it was her younger brother that was in the gang that beat up Jose. And she didn't want her little brother to get in trouble. And all that happened was Jose went to a party and he got really fucking wasted and didn't know how to get home. And so he just kind of attached himself to the wrong people. Yeah. And people, when they're drunk, they get in fights and they say stupid shit and they shove each other around. And he got into the melee and her. Not me. I act like a model citizen. Oh, I I'm always, drunk. Yeah, I've never been in a fight. What are you talking about? No, I'm perfect and never say anything wrong. But that's what happened is that her, yeah. her little brother was in just this, this. He just happened to get caught up with the wrong group of people and he he, he died. That's it, sad. It's terribly sad. They've never opened up his case after that. It's never been settled. The little brother that she talked about, he died by suicide because he felt so guilty about it. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. Later on, there was Zoot Suit the play and then Zoot Suit the movie and... Zoot suits have been featured in movies and like the Janet Jackson video, but the Zoot Suit riots, and I don't know if you would even want to film it today. I think it would be too intense. Just the description I feel like it would be pictures. Hard, yeah, it would be hard to watch. It's, yeah, super hard to watch. But that's our creep today is sort of a creepy moment in history. So it's the Sleepy Lagoon murder and the Zoot Suit riots. That is a really good job, Margot. I had never, never heard this. I only knew the song and didn't bother to ever Google it and find out why. <laughs> because, because for reasons. So good job. Thank you. There's, I really recommend the video if you can get it. I put the YouTube link in there. It's for American Experience about the the murders and all of that involved. It was, but it, it, I thought it was just really interesting. But I mean, and this is like. You know, of 10 years ago, my friend's son graduated from college and was going to be a New York cop. We were talking about Mexicans and he was just like, well, you know, they're all bringing drugs here. They're all doing that. I'm like, <laughs> oh. I'm like, first of all, you're Puerto Rican. Isn't there any sort of like, you know, kinship right. with somebody who's also Latino? But no, he just no. he just bought this, you know, hook, line and sinker, too. And I had yeah. to like talk to him I'm like, no, that's not true. Yeah, we I we just had this here in 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 America with when Donald Trump, when former mm -hmm. disgraced president Donald Trump Putin's announced friend. he's running, what? Yeah, Putin's friend Trump. He his in his announcement that yes. I, he's running for president, he said the most awful things about Mexicans. Like they're not sending their best people. They're all racists and drug addicts. Rapists. Like it's just, <laughs> Yeah, it's fucking gross. I was like the rapist talking about how all Mexicans are rapists. Right. That's like, hilarious. He's trash. Yeah. Yeah. But I wanted to mention that because this is something like this was 80 years ago and people are still thinking yeah. this way. Yeah. So do you want to hear about some non-creeps? Yes, please. Okay. So I decided not to go with a person. You went, you went with an event, so I'm kind of going with it i guess i could say it's an event too so we have a couple of big things going on one's in the world mm -hmm. and one is here so let's start with let's start with the one that's here so right now in texas they are 
the governor has signed, I guess it's, I don't know if it's a law yet. He's trying to make it law. He's trying to make it law, which is basically it's a law to make it that if children are trans, that is child abuse and that they would charge the parents with child abuse and take the children away. It's beyond evil. Right. It is like going after people who are already super vulnerable. This is, it's also, this is like these fucking made up stories about Mm -hmm. like parents, like letting like little kids get gender reassignments or like none of these things are happening. It's all bananas and it's just very upsetting. And there's a lot of people in Texas who like have children that maybe don't identify yeah, or maybe they're non-binary mm-hmm. or they're questioning, you know, questioning and they're legit afraid for their children. There's a lot of organizations right now that you could donate to to help uh, fight the this proposed law and also help these families. Like mm-hmm. some of them are seriously thinking about like relocating. You well, know. people say that, but it's like. That's expensive to relocate. Yeah, yeah, because people say shit like, well, they're like, well, they just leave Texas. Have you tried moving? Yeah. That shit's fucking expensive. All right. It's expensive. I I am at, like, I would, if there was, like, something here in California where they were, like, they were going to discriminate against autistic children, I, of course I'd want to get the fuck out of here. But do you know how hard it would be? Like, yeah. it's super hard. So there's a lot of organizations you can donate, and I'm going to, we're going to list them in the show notes and I just wanted to give them a shout out here. So there's one called tent yep. and it's the trans transgender education network of Texas. They are a great place to donate to. There is Texas trans kids. So it's like TX trans And it's a resource for trans youth in Texas and it helps them fight for their rights, you know, in courts, legislation, uh, local government schools, things like that. Um, there's Equality Texas, which is a political adv- advocacy group that will help. There is uh, Lambda Legal mm-hmm. that uh, fights cases that protect and advance their rights. Um, there's Trans Youth Family Allies. There is Algo, which is an Austin-based organization. And then there's the Trans Pride Initiative. And they also, like, they advocate for trans rights in education, health care, housing, and employment. Like I said, we're going to put them all in the show notes. So if you want to donate, I mean, you could donate a couple of bucks or if you can't, I think some of these actually have, like, volunteer things that you could do or you could just, like, sign up to make some calls. Mm -hmm. You could send postcards to representatives, write letters. I love to drunk dial my representatives. I do it all the time. I They're on my speed dial. I'm holding up my phone. They're on my speed dial. I have a beer and I leave Nancy Pelosi some shitty message, you know, at like midnight where I'm like, and another thing, Nancy Pelosi. Blah, blah, blah. One, star, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> one star, Nancy Pelosi. One star. One star. Do not recommend. I don't like the sound of your voice and I don't like the way you breathe. One star. <laughs> but, you know, um, you could call your representatives. You could call representatives in Texas. Like, let them know. Also, there is an election happening in Texas and the governor is running against Beto O'Rourke. Mm-hmm. And you could donate to Beto O'Rourke if you want. There are little things you can do. I should- And then... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that um, one of our shows that we're really passionate about is F This Movie. And yes. right now, and it's the letter F and then this movie, and they just talk about movies. That's their whole thing. If you donate to one of these charities and you send them the receipt, and you can follow them on Twitter at F This Movie, they will put you in for a drawing and they're going to pick three people that get to pick the movie that they're going to talk about. So they do like a really in depth discussion, much like we do with Dorking Out, which yes. we'll talk about in a minute. But if you donate to one of those charities that Sonia just mentioned, you could also be in to have a whole episode on a movie you love by really cool yeah. people. Yeah. And the the show is always mm-hmm. like so insightful and so funny and they are such good people. Mm-hmm. Thank you for, for pointing that out to everybody. You could 
maybe get an episode that's Patrick and Adam talking oh. about uh, another Kiefer Sutherland movie just so that they'll do their Kiefer Sutherland impression <laughs> that makes me laugh so hard I cry. Or Mark Wahlberg. Like, or Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> what is it, buddy? Shit, damn it! It's in the trees. <laughs> so good. Shit, I need to... Do- I need to- screenshot my receipt and send it to him because I'm going to ask for another <laughs> <Keeper's mother. laughs> so on the other thing I was going to wreck obviously there we're all horrified about what's going on in the Ukraine you know you could I'm going to give you a whole list of organizations that you could donate to there's other ways once again that you could help if you don't have money you but there are there are like other things that you can do if you don't want to do that. And it's another one where you could probably write or make phone calls or things like that. But some some good ones to do are UNICEF, mm-hmm. obviously. Doctors Without Borders. They are they are there helping people. There is one called Sunflower of Peace. And it's a nonprofit organization that is making first aid medical like backpacks for paramedics and doctors that are there on the front lines. There's the Red Cross, Mm -hmm. of course. Save the Children. And this one's actually based in London, but they're delivering aid to vulnerable children in in the Ukraine. So, yeah. And this is here. I think people need to remember there are soldiers that are fighting, but there's also just civilians, normal people, families. You know, and and some of these people who are fighting, they're not soldiers. They're citizens. Norm- they're just citizens, and they're there's Parents. some footage. Of, yeah, footage of like a dad putting his daughter on a bu- like it like it'll punch you heart. in the it'll punch you in the gut. So, you know, just think about those things. There's another organization called Care, and they are it's a Ukraine crisis fund. It's providing immediate aid like food, water hygiene kits cash if they need it like even just cash there's i already said the red cross and then the last one here is voices of children and this is an organization that's already like trying to get in there to help like psychological and psychosocial support for ukrainian children during this because the shit's gonna fuck people up yeah it's absolutely terrifying we know that and we know yeah. that, it's, that it's bad and, and, you know, we try to make that balancing act of, you know, doing something that's entertaining to take people's minds off of things. But yeah. at the same time, what we talk about is important and yeah. it's adjacent to like the topic that we're t- talking about. Yeah. So today we're talking about racism and, you know, dividing people up and deciding some people are just less worthy than others. And so it doesn't matter if you go into a movie theater and drag them out and they're 12 yeah. years old and... It, or they could just happen to live in a country that has real borders and a real culture, but somehow they don't want, they're not yeah. being respected. It's just, we get that. And so we're trying to do that in a healthy way for everybody. Yeah. And there's, you know, and I've talked about this a lot in the group, like whenever bad things help happen and I start to feel really helpless, like I look for little ways that I can help, like, I'm here in San Francisco. I have my life that I have to manage and child to take care of. I can't like, you know, fly to DC and pound on doors or whatever. Like, right. you know, I, but there's these Well, the little truckers things. will block you, by the way. The Canadian yeah, no truckers. <laughs> Sorry, there's that's like, a whole other fucking topic. There's a, uh, these are like the little things I could do. Like I could donate some money to one of these organizations that fight for good causes, that do good things. And that's, what I try to do and it makes me feel a little less helpless. So I, you know, I'm definitely giving money to the, to the uh, tent one to transgender education network of Texas. Uh, Oh, I didn't mention in here, the international uh, rescue committee is one that I donate to pretty reg that also helps in the Ukraine. So that's another one. I'll make sure to put that link in there too, but it's just, even if you can't, like I said, drunk dial a rep you know retweet the good organizations like go on social media and spread the message that way like whatever it can you know that makes you feel a little bit better and like you're helping out and you're reaching out but we can all feel helpless at these times it's it's hard it's hard to hear this stuff it's hard to absolutely manage it and yeah so you know we're thinking about you yes 
and all of our listeners over there, like, be safe. Please be safe. Okay. You know, what's so funny is that uh, on The View, Joy Behar, I don't know if you saw this clip. Mm -mm. So the panel's talking about the invasion. I think it was yesterday. God, it's been so long, but it was like only yesterday (laughs) for us. And Joy Behar in The View is talking and they were talking about how horrible it is in the Ukraine and the people and it's going to mess up people's plans. And then Joy Behar's like, yeah, I was going to go to Rome for a holiday, but that's not going to happen. And at the one hand, I'm like, that's so daffy. And then I realized, oh, my friend Laura, friend Laura is in Rome right now. Like, I have a couple of friends yeah. traveling in Europe. My my niece is in Spain right now. Like, it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and this is impacting, like, you're not, you know, there's a lot of other countries that also border Russia. You know, like, Poland is mm-hmm. there, you know, and, you know, the company I work for, we have a lot of employees that are in Poland, and this this impacts them and it's close it's closer to them than it is to us over here so it's something to think about just be sensitive be kind Mm -hmm. you know it's not us and them like don't be a creep don't be a creep there's this huge fucking like team mentality of especially right now in this especially in this country with like liberals and conservatives and it's like all of a sudden all these conservatives are like team putin because it's like the enemy of their enemy is their friend or mm-hmm. something. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, this is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't think that way. Don't think like that. But I maybe I'm just being racist against white people. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's what that one star review said. So <laughs> they wouldn't lie. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I kind of imagine that person thinking of the shittiest thing they think they could say about us while they're typing it in there angrily into their phones or with laptops. And I just kind of laugh. I'm just like, I'm like, you're a miserable cow. Like, whatever. I know. Seriously. I'm not I'm not going to lose sleep over this. No, 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 no. Okay, so that's the episode this week. If you like the sound of our voices and you haven't given up (laughs) on us. We co-host a show called Dorking Out where we just get silly. We dork out about movies. And this is not a drill, people. Airheads. It's happening. It is happening. 1994's Airhead starring Brendan Fraser, Steve Buscemi, and Adam Sandler. Can't wait. One of my favorite comedies. It was on Comedy Central all the time in the 90s. Yes. It's on HBO Max. I could not be more excited. So we're going to be talking about that. I think someone at HBO Max listens to the show they and, to. They, and they heard us saying, where's pump up the volume? Where's airheads? And where's better off dead? Release better <laughs> off dead, you cowards. <laughs> <laughs> so find us at dorking out there. Please follow us on all the things, social media, your suggestions, especially for creeps and non creeps. Always looking for non creeps. Believe yes, me, please. especially in these days. We love it when you use the Annie Potts gif. We got one from Ghostbusters. We just covered Mm -hmm. Ghostbusters for dorking out, by the way. Perfect movie. Perfect Perfect movie. movie. Sonia, where can they find you? You can find me at thesoniashow.com, where I am writing again. And you can find me at The Sonia Show on Twitter and Instagram and the TikTok. Where can people find you, Margo? You can find me at Brooklyn Fit Chick, mostly for Twitter and Instagram. My site is brooklynfitchick.com. In the meantime, everybody, we're just giving you a big hug. Stay safe. Do what you can when you can. Take breaks Mm -hmm. when you need to. Don't be a creep. Creep. (laughs) Stepped on it. Whatever. No, you're fine. (laughs) Thank you for listening to us talk about creeps. You can follow us at What a Creep Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But don't follow us too closely. You can email us your creepy stories at whatacreeppodcast at gmail.com. But please keep your dick pics to yourself. 